Let's consider, in the same experiment, adding a strong acid to the problem above. So remembering from our original equation, we had a buffered solution where we had conjugate pairs that were 0.3 molar in acetic acid, HA, and 0.3 molar in the acetate ion, A negative. Suppose we wanted to calculate the pH of the original buffer described in the previous problem after adding strong acid, 0 0.02 molar. So adding strong acid should cause the reaction to change pH. It should decrease on our pH scale. Let's consider if I add acid to a buffered system, the acid reacts with a base, the A negative, and in this case it was acetate. So let's go ahead and show the strong acid as H+, plus, and again, eliminating the spectator chloride, reacting with the conjugate base in our buffered system, H+, plus will react with the base, C2H3O2 negative, and it will produce more of the acetate ion. So visually, let's make sense of what we just said. If this is our buffered solution, which we drew a moment ago, and we're adding strong acid, the acid reacts with the conjugate base, producing even more of the conjugate here, acetic acid. Adding strong acid produces more acid in the buffered system. That makes sense. We're pointing at the acetic acid. So let's think about what we know before the reaction. We had 0 0.02 moles, molar concentration per liter of the hydrogen ion. We had 0 0.3 molar solution of the acetate, and we had 0 0.3 molar solution of its conjugate acid. We know that it's all one to one to one stoichiometric ratio, so the limiting reagent clearly is the O2 molar H+, and it will use up the reactant and produce more of the product. So let's consider what we have after. Again, reactants get used until they're gone. There will be no remaining amount of hydrogen ion. It also consumes 0.02 molar of the acetate ion, leaving us with 0.28 molar after the equation and producing O2 molar in addition to the original 0.3. So we have 0.32 molar of the acid. Using the Henderson-Hasselbeck equation, we would show pH can be found by taking pKa plus the log of the ratio of base over acid. So let's calculate pH. Using negative log of the Ka value, 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. That value is coming from appendix D, the value of acetic acid, plus the log of the ratio of base over acid. The base is 0.28 molar. The acid is 0.32 molar. pKa plus the log of the ratio of base over acid. The base this time was a reactant. Let's hit to find the pH of this solution. Negative log of 1.8 E negative 5 close parenthesis, plus the log of the ratio of 0.28 over 0.32, close parenthesis. And we get a value 4.69, if I round, 4.69 pH units. Again, the solution started at about 4.74. It became slightly more acidic even after the addition of a strong acid. If we were to compare the same thing, adding that same acid to just pure water, we could find its pH directly by taking negative log of the concentration of the hydrogen ion, and we'd hit negative log of 0.02, and that value is quite low. 1.70 would be the pH of that acid in pure water. Adding that same amount of acid to a buffered solution caused the pH to decrease slightly from 4.74 to 4.69. Buffered solutions are conjugate pairs 
that act as a sponge, soaking up excess acid or excess base, preventing a shift in pH. It changes slightly, but certainly not to the degree if it were in pure water. You have what you need now to tackle lesson number two as your assignment, lesson two on buffers. <laughs>